This is it. We did it. Yes, sir. All right, cool. So why don't um why don't we just like start with the intro? Like I, we have like some people. Uh, you know, I grew up with the Dell commercials. I grew up, you know, seeing you all over the place. Like, I want to. I just want to like get in like a personal introduction first and like say who you are. Um, there's some people in the audience that are from Canada and elsewhere. We're actually, I was surprised to to find out that the Dell commercials didn't air. So they found out I was doing this Dell screening. They're like, "Who's the Dell dude?" And I was like, "I thought that was like a sort of universal uh, marker of childhood, but apparently not for anyone." So. Well, don't know. I actually, I, I appreciate that once in a while. <laughs> yeah, so all right. Everyone, so, yeah, let, let us know who you are. Then they react, reenact the whole commercial for them, and they're still like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Not ring a bell. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, just let us know uh, who are you, um, what do you do, and, and why do people know you? All right, so uh, my name's Ben Curtis. I was born and raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And um, I'm a professional actor in New York City. I'm also a uh, yoga instructor, personal trainer. I own a wellness company, uh, which is something I got into through acting. Obviously, taking care of your body is important. But um, helping other people feel great and live life to the fullest is a big part of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, I'm also a musician. So uh, I've lived in New York about 15 years. I... Um, I'm now working more than ever as an actor um, since the Dell commercials. Uh, I do film, TV, theater, and voiceovers. Um, and I have my own wellness company called Soul Fit NYC, uh, where we do all the things I, I talk to you about. So, uh, cool. yeah, I'm just, you know, a guy like everyone else trying to live in a city I love. Yeah. Um, and I I have a lot of love for the South and uh, a lot of family from Baltimore. So cool. Uh, bad for you guys, and sorry I can't be there in person. Yeah, I wish I wish you were just here. So I wish I wish you could have come out with us afterwards. Um, yeah. So I guess like just tell us real quick. I saw I saw a couple interviews. Just like a quick overview of like how you got the part as the Dell guy. You know, I think like it's you would never really see a tech company today like sort of have that same approach of like a sort of comical. I, I think tech commercials have gotten like so much more serious and they're like advertising almost like it's a part of your body or something you know it's like this yeah. very sleek surface level advertising and I think there's something really unique about your face as the face of Dell like it's just very like particular moment in time so I guess just like let me let me know what, what like how did you get the part and like how did you play it and what, and what was the whole process with that um, yes, yeah, so I was an acting major at NYU, and one of my best friends was working with a manager, an acting manager, but he was in business school, and he was like, yeah, man, I got this manager, I'm going out on auditions, and I was like, no, dude, that's not okay, like, I'm the actor here in this friendship, like, hook me up, so uh, he introduced me to her, and she sent me out on a few projects, and I booked the first one, um, uh -huh. which led to a few more auditions, and I think within about a month, she sent me out through, I was freelancing with some agents, and she sent me out on this Dell commercial. And I was about, I was 19 going on 20, mm -hmm. uh, and that was almost 15 years ago, scary to say. Wow. <laughs> uh, and um, I think I was the only guy there without my mom, because they were looking for 12 to 17 year olds, so I knew to play young, mm -hmm. and uh they had the script, the first script you can see, that commercial on YouTube, the All I Want for Christmas. And it was like, yeah. the mom dead. And I was like very good at manipulating my parents and uh, <laughs> and being cute and obnoxious. So <laughs> that's kind of what I went for. Cool. And it took, it took off. Like I nailed it. Three callbacks later, they still didn't know what they want. There was like a short, freckly, overweight kid, a tall, skinny, African-American kid, and me. And, you know, I, I think they were looking for, uh, you know, I don't think they had a certain look in mind, but I, I know that I was older than those kids and I had the experience and the uh, acting chops to really do whatever they wanted. So mm -hmm. I really brought my A game and I booked it and little did anyone know that it was going to turn into multiple commercials, let alone a, you know, national, international, world-breaking campaign. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know, and even 9-11 happen, happened during that time. The stock market crash happened during that time. Um, 
and Dell's sales were soaring. So I've been interviewed all over the world on, you know, business um, or business organizations, publications, news, radio. I mean, you name it. Um, yeah. And so a lot of the last ten years has been actually getting my face back as Ben Curtis, the actor, not the Dell guy, and that yeah. was actually. And I definitely, um, I definitely want to get in, I want to get into that because I think that sort of has a lot to do with sort of like, like reclaiming something, with with, with like this the, the part of like the, the the character actor who gets big on one thing and sort of the process of what you're cast for or what your main attributes or selling points are sort of become the reason why, like maybe no one will hire you for a while or like why you like sort of like won't look you know the, it's like you buy a new computer, you has these specifications you know you're all you're all stoked on it. And then two years later, like those very same specifications are like, you know, it's, 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 it's an old selling point. You know, I think like maybe I'm interested in your, in your point of view of like sort of moving past that. Do you still see that as part of your sort of repertoire? Or do you like, where, like, where are you now? Like, what are you, what are you doing now? Well, I definitely shunned it for a long time. I, I, I resented it quite a bit, and then I had a wake-up call that, you know, I really brought a lot of um, a, a lot of happiness to a lot of people, and that was something that I couldn't ignore. Even, you know, 15 years later, 12 years later, people still thanking me, telling me how much they loved that, how much it made a difference for them seeing my face on TV. I mean, granted, listen, yeah. I... I not everybody hated I loved it. Like, it was on all day long for three years. So I, I also come across people who absolutely hated it, you know. And uh, But I think anything that brings a lot of opinions is a good thing. Yeah. You know, love-hate uh, is, is always great for the press. And um, one of my best friends hated my commercials, and then he <laughs> became my best friend. Um, so, uh, you know, I shunned it. Now I really... Um, I, I do parodies of it all the time. Um, yeah. I'm writing a play about it called Dude, You're Getting a Cell, um, a jail cell, because I got arrested um, several times. The The media really only knows about one of those times. Okay. Um, but I'm talking about like, actually what it was like being the face of such a huge campaign, being famous all across America, and then basically like wiped, wiped away, shunned, blacklisted, um, you know, my struggle through with uh, drugs and alcohol and PTSD uh, after 9-11. I was a survivor. Um, I lived in the right around the World Trade Center uh, during that. And um, and then how I got my life back together, and I'm now, like, resurging stronger than ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now I totally work with it, and I, you know, that's why I'm here today talking to you. Oh. Hey, sorry I lost you there. I was in the middle of a rambling question. Um, yeah. I was like, I had like, I had a question ready, but then like, <clears throat> you saying that you live right around the corner from the World Trade Center was, I was like a, a woe type moment. Um, so yeah, so I guess so that you were doing this new play um, called Dude, You're Getting a Cell, uh, inspired by I guess you know, just as infamous as you are famous for the Dell commercials is like your sort of termination from Dell. Um, I don't, I don't want to like linger on that. I was like, you know, I put out this call like for, you know, if you could ask, you know, Ben Curtis, the Dell dude, one question, what would it be? Not surprisingly, not surprisingly, most of them, you know, have to do with like weed and, and the arrest. Um, I don't want to linger on that. Um, but yeah, so just take us, take us from your term, like the events that led up to the termination from Dell um, up to, uh, yeah, up to now, like, up to now, like, sort of this, like, rebirth, this revival, and then we'll sort of get into the more heady stuff about what you thought about the playlist, and then, uh, we'll, uh, we'll finish up. Great. Um, so, yeah, after I got arrested, um... Can you tell you know, us, can you tell us what happened with that real quick? Like, the, the story I saw? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had a friend's birthday party, and I called a delivery service, as you do in New York, um... So we don't really have cars, so you have it delivered to you just like everything else here. Mm-hmm. And uh, guys actually came on a bicycle instead of a car, which is already a little shady. But, um, you know, I was in the Lower East Side in New York, and I figured it was cool. And uh, 
And unfortunately, they were being followed by an undercover cop and a taxi cab. Um, and I didn't know that. So right after I bought it, next thing I knew, I was thrown up against a wall, and along with the dealer, and uh, arrested. And I got laughed at quite a bit in the precinct and harassed because I was actually arrested in a kilt, uh, and I wasn't wearing any underwear either. <laughs> they didn't know. Uh, and I, my best friend and I, he and I were both uh, dating Scottish women at the time, so we'd gone out and bought kilts together. And it's a great idea to wear them on my birthday. And um, we, uh, it actually kind of saved me at first because they put me in my own cell for a while and uh, knew I'd probably get like harass or my ass kicked and then all the cops harassed me constantly as soon as they found out who I was so after that uh yeah it, it made national headlines it was on CNN headline news before I even got out of jail and the headline was dude you're getting a cell so that's also where I pulled it from yeah um, and uh um Dell has a strict no drug policy so they immediately fired me this is way before you know marijuana is like a miss. It's not even, like, it's decriminalized in a lot of places now, including New York. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was a big deal. Um, you know, of course, all of the stoners and uh, weed dealers across America came out of the woodwork then. And, you know, I smoked with a lot of people, including, like, the staff of High Times. And, <laughs> uh, I met a lot of, you know, stoner culture. Um, so it is kind of funny, you know, and I've gotten a yeah. lot of flack that, uh and then after that, I really couldn't work. Uh, you know, what I was famous for then was the kid who got arrested, the Dell kid who got arrested. Yeah. You know, despite having been on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno and a lot of other big things. Um, TRL with Carson Daly, um, <laughs> like Good Morning America. Yeah, about that, I guess, I guess just because I, I know you have to, to go pretty soon. Like, I guess a lot of people are really surprised that you're not, like, living in a mansion right now, just doing whatever you want. Like... If you're yeah. if you are if you're if you are the face of one of the largest corporations in America, like at, on a on a nationally syndicated uh, like commercial uh, uh, like program, like what what like what is the fate of, of those people who do that? Like are are you are you set for life? Are you like what what happened to you? Well, what happened to me is I I was not set for life. They did not pay me nearly what I deserved. Um, Dell was very resistant to paying me that much money. So, you know, I think if that commercial campaign was to happen now, I would have made millions and I'd be great, but I didn't make close to that. Um, you know, I may have in total made, I, I mean, I didn't even make half a million. Um, I didn't get residuals. Um, I didn't get stock. Uh, you know, if I could do it again, I would have invested in stock. I do know the Verizon guy, and I know that he set it up pretty well. They used him for six seven, eight years, yeah. um, probably pretty set. Um, <clears throat> however, like he may never work again. Like we're both branded. Our faces are branded as these people, you know, as this company. So I'm like a walking, uh, commercial, you know, so it's taken me a long time to break that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not set for life and I, a lot of expenses. I went to a really expensive college and I had a lot of fun, you know? So if I, could do it again. I'd definitely do some things differently. Cool. Well, all right. So that's personal stuff. I guess. Did you? Uh, did you get to check out the playlist? Yeah, I got to see some of it. I didn't cool. get to see all of it. What? Did, I just. I, what were your thoughts? Like, what did you? What did you think? <laughs> I mean, I think some of it's funny. Some of it's obnoxious. Um, I think some of it's really interesting. I mean, most of all, I was really impressed. I couldn't believe how much content was out there. You know, that I still hadn't seen yet. Um, and I was just overall kind of flattered. I was like, wow, all these people really had this much of an opinion about it. Um, and, you know, I think I've got a lot of problems with technology, too. I think it's really kept us from connecting with each other. And, um, you know, it is cool that you and I can do something like this and I can talk to a large audience right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I was listening to Oprah Deepak meditations and, like, millions of people across the world are listening to those and they're reaching millions. But at the same time, like, we are not connected on a soul level like people don't say hello to each other on the street they're like buried in their phones you know we have glasses that are projecting things as we walk like we're actually losing presence and connection which is why i'm really excited things like yoga and meditation are coming back in our society because if we if we don't get grounded like we're gonna lose our minds i mean kids are being born with like 
all types of crazy brain and mental disorders and mm-hmm. hyperactivity. Do you think? Game do you think? Program. Uh, do you think that that um, you're saying, you know, I think I think people are aware, you know, that we're like sort of losing contact, that we have all these like flashy new things that we can do. I think they're aware. I don't think everyone is. Well, I, I, think, I think they're aware, but they partake in it. So you have like this like sort of like this, this, this ultimate anxiety or guilt that you know what you're partaking in is bringing you unhappiness, but because of your saturation and because of the ease of access that it provides – you know, it's really hard to exit that cycle, you know, and it, because it's just so easy to slip back in. I wouldn't say it's hard to exit. It's just, it's, it's easier to slip back into it. And I guess I'm curious, do you think, do you think that that contributes to the violence that you see? I mean, like a lot of those videos, like if you search, dude, you're getting Adele, you'll see, you know, your commercials, but most of the videos that I found were actually extremely violent, you know, like, mostly guys with guns, you know, looking at the camera. I mean, uh, there are thousands and thousands of videos like that. Like, do you, I mean, I guess, what, do you think that that contributes to the violence that we see towards technology, like when it's outdated or it's performed its use? Absolutely, yeah. Um, And I think, you know, a lot of video games are training kids to be violent. Like, the military's actually invested in some of these video games that, like, also desensitizes and, like, get you excited about shooting things and amped up the exhilaration and the um, sensory experience where you're being fed so much sensory stuff that you actually be have no choice you either go crazy or you get desensitized so like it's absolutely allowing us and like I think we're losing that human connection that's 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 keeping us safe you know like that's like the human side of it is the side that like has you think twice. Can't I would listen. I would actually argue that like the, you know in the case of the military it's not that they're like breeding us to be violent is that they actually hijack the sort of simulated nature of like video games where it's actually what you're doing doesn't have violent implications. They actually hijack that sort of disconnect so that we don't feel these things towards extremely violent actions. You see what I'm saying? So like they recruit yeah, top video game operators to, 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 to run drone strikes and because, you know, they, 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 they really train you to not see this as you're bombing a village in Yemen. It's that you're controlling something that's thousands of miles away, similar to the way that you would control some of the software. But yeah, anyways, like I think, I think that it doesn't necessarily make us violent, but that it it's definitely hijacks is the purpose of the, uh, of, of, of that disconnect that we're talking about. Yeah. Like, I love this conversation. <laughs> you know, cool. Well, yeah, well, I know. Flag. Yeah, no, exactly. Welcome to my, uh, welcome to my room. Uh, yeah. I guess, yeah, last question. Uh, are you happy right now? I've never been happier. Cool. Yeah, I'm really excited about where my career is going. I just booked a guest star role on uh, the Jack and Triumph show, which starts cool. airing on Old Swim February 20th. Um, and I got a lot of other things in the works, so... Uh, like I said, if people want to stay tuned, the best thing to do is follow me at uh, on Twitter at actor Ben Curtis, um, or yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. Um, and you know, America hasn't seen the last of me. I'm just getting started, so I really appreciate your enthusiasm and your support. And I hope everybody has a great time. And it's been an honor to speak to you, awesome. uh, you know, and everyone out there. So I'm really glad you're doing this. All right. Well, yeah, Ben. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And yeah. yeah, next time you're in Baltimore, you have my number now. Hit me up. I would love to actually have like yeah. a, a real drink. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd love that. All right. Cool, man. You're awesome. Thanks for talking to All me. Right. My pleasure. Have All fun right. and bro. Yeah. See you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.